Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Governor Lamont, Lieutenant Governor Bysiewicz, State Representative Cheeseman, uh, local and state elected officials and leaders, uh, General Yvonne, uh, representing in the Connecticut National Guard, Admiral Kelly, from our, uh, our friends across the river there in the Coast Guard, service members and members of our community, welcome. Welcome to Groton, the submarine capital of the world. Mayor Hedrick knows that well. <laughs> and to Naval Submarine Base, New London. I'm Captain Todd Moore, the 52nd Commanding Officer of Subbase New London. And it's my pleasure to welcome you and greet you here at the Submarine Force Museum. Fortunately, uh, my comments are so lengthy, they'll stay put uh, <coughs> during this high wind speed here. Uh, but I wanted to offer just a quick welcome and to mention why we're here. Today we celebrate the latest effort of the state of Connecticut to enhance our nation's defense by improving quality of life for service members and their families. And how appropriate that we do so here in front of the state's ship, historic ship Nautilus, on the eastern terrace of the Thames River. A few hundred yards upriver is where the Navy got its roots in this area by a grant from the state of Connecticut which conveyed the land which would become the submarine base in a deed of gift in 1868. Today, Submarine Base New London is home to 16 fast attack submarines and some 70 tenant commands. These include the, the Undersea Warfare Development Center, the Submarine Learning Center, and, then, and the Naval Submarine School which have global reach in advancing our nation's undersea superiority. Of course, at the heart of the submarine base are more than 22,000 active and reserve military members, military family members, and civilian employees of Navy Team New London. And today, those military family members, especially spouses transitioning into Connecticut for employment, will be the focus and ultimate beneficiaries of this celebration. So I know some uh, Navy and Coast Guard spouses have joined us this morning, and they are here because they know firsthand through their personal stories how this act in expanding economic opportunity and occupations licensed by the Departments of Public Health and Consumer Protection could have benefited them in the past or will be benefiting them now or in the future. So thank you for attending today. But most importantly, thank you for what your, you spouses do every day serving alongside your military member and supporting your military family. This past Saturday saw the commissioning of the newest fast attack submarine in our fleet, USS Hyman G. Rickover at Electric Boat down the river. Anyone lucky enough to have heard the words of the ship's sponsor, Mrs. Darlene Greenard, understands exactly the nature of the military spouse. As she said, to paraphrase her, it may be the highly trained and well-equipped service member on the front lines, but it's the spouse and family back home that are at the heart of every military unit. And I'll let my fellow services speak for themselves, but I'm sure they would give a knowing nod to the fact that there isn't a submarine that drives up or down this river that doesn't that isn't packed with children's drawings and family photos tucked with care around the sailors' bunks. And to keep faith with those service members who go downrange in defense of our nation, we owe their families a respect, and I consider it my job to make them feel welcome and fully supported here at the subbase. That is why the spouse licensure portability is so important to the Department of Defense. And I'm happy that Mr. Chris Arnold, the Northeast Regional Liaison for the Department of Defense's Office of Military Community and Family Policy, could join us today to celebrate. Thank you, Chris. Before I turn the proceedings over to Mr. Bob Ross, the Connecticut Executive Director for the Office of Military Affairs, allow me to end my welcome on this additional note of thanks. Navy Team New London members here that know that one of my priorities is to make our community and the installation a better place to live and work. I want Navy families to be begging to come here to, to southeastern Connecticut. 
I want service members to bring their families here, to settle down here and retire here, and to continuing to contribute to the vitality of southeastern Connecticut. So, Governor, thank you and all uh, state and local leaders and citizens of this great state for helping make this community a better place to live and work. Thank you all very much. Well, good morning, everybody. Governor, thank you for being here. Lieutenant Governor is going to join us in just a few minutes. Uh, Admiral Kelly, thank you for being here, and General Levine, um, and all of our civic leaders that I work with day in and day out. Um, I want to thank uh, Tony Sheridan and his uh, Military Affairs Committee. Uh, Dara and Angela are here. This is not something we do once in a while. This is something we do all the time, day in, day out. We meet every month to work on issues that affect military families. So this bill here today is extremely important on a local level, on a state level, and on a national level. And I want to kind of walk you through that just briefly. So the military is prim uh, primarily a male-dominated place. We all know that. And we could talk all day about why that is. I think it's going to be like that for the rest of my life. What that means is 90%, more than 90% of military spouses are women. And so when the governor established his uh, governor's council on women and girls, I raised this issue at the very first meeting. And the lieutenant governor who chairs that uh, council has kept it on the agenda. So here we are two years later and we're going to experience an outcome. We're not going to talk about this anymore. We're going to get it done. So before the pandemic, military spouses had an unemployment rate of 16%. That was four times the average at the time. It might be worse now. 71% um, reported that they were underemployed. So they had more education, more licensing than they needed for the only job they could get. 77% say that second income is essential in a military family. You can't make that military salary stretch far enough. And this is the important thing. 43% said that military spouse uh, employment leads to a decision to stay or leave the military. That's what takes this up to the national level. It's a national security issue. A lot of service members suffer long-term family separation because of an economic reality, not because of their mission. I personally know of a Navy base in this country. 60% of the officers at that base are geographic bachelors. They left their family somewhere else for education and for a job. This will help alleviate that stress. The secretaries of the Army, Navy, and Air Force have asked DOD to make future basing decisions, and that's code word for BRAC, future basing decisions based on a state's progress on education and spousal employment. So that means we almost lost this base twice. The next time a BRAC comes, we're going to be talking about our progress on this issue. They've also reached out, the, uh, the service secretaries reached out to the National Association of Governors and said, we need help. We can't fix this at the federal level. We need state legislatures to take this up. We need governors to take this up. And we've done that here. When I testified before the General Law Committee, I had to tell them, Connecticut is number 50. We are last in the nation on this issue. I've lived in Connecticut 25 years. I'm not used to ever saying that, that we're last on something. Well, today, we become a leader in the country. We move up to like the top 10, showing progress on this issue. All right, so who wins in this uh, legislation? I think everybody wins. I think military families win because it alleviates some financial stress. I think employers win because it's going to bring talent into the workforce faster. Talent employers need and jobs the spouses need. The Connecticut state economy is going to uh, benefit from this because if you have more discretionary money in a military family, it flows right back into the local economy. Other newly arriving residents will benefit from this. I like the fact that we take an approach where we can solve a problem for a military family, but then make that solution available to the larger population. So we're not doing something in total isolation for a special group. We're using that special group to get us to a solution that helps everybody. Our military installations are going to benefit because, as the captain talked about, a happy sailor is a hard-working sailor. 
And if sailors, Marines, airmen, and Coast Guardmen come to work and they're worried about their family, that is an impact on readiness. And it's going to have a national solution for us if more states follow our example, then the attrition rate that we're seeing in our all-volunteer military will be improved. I want military families to have a great experience in southeastern Connecticut. The Navy brought me here and I stayed, and I'm going to stay for the rest of my life. I want other people to have that experience. Our message is so clear. It is so clear. Connecticut is a great place to be stationed. It's a great place to live, to raise a family, to work, and to retire after you leave the military. So to our military families, welcome. We're glad you're here. We want you in our schools. We want you in our neighborhoods. We want you in our workplaces. We want you to stay here. So with that, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Holly Cheeseman. Holly is actually my representative. I live in her district. But Holly's been a great partner with me. We work on a lot of issues together. And on this particular bill, she was our uh, secret weapon in the legislature, uh, really being a great champion for us. And I'm just so glad to see you. And thank you for all your work, Holly. Thank you so much, Bob. And I just have one criticism today. Please, you have to arrange the wind so it's blowing my hair backwards. I worked so hard to fix it this morning. Anyway, <laughs> it's thank you, Bob. Thank you, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Captain Moore, Captain Kelly. It's an honor to be here today. And as Bob said, we have worked long and hard on this bill to create the opportunity for those military spouses to continue their careers, their trades, because that is so important. And I think it's very telling that this is happening in August, because it was just over 16 years ago, in fact, August 24, 2005, that the Sword of Damocles, the last brack that was hanging over the head of this sub-base, Governor Rell announced that the Department of Defense had ruled that this base would remain open. And I think it was at that point that Governor Rell created your position, Bob, to ensure that Connecticut would never be left behind when it came to advocating for an important asset to our towns, our cities, our country, and the world, like the sub base. And as Bob said, now the Department of Defense is looking even more holistically at bases and the possibility of BRAC. They're rating us on our friendliness to providing those career opportunities to the military spouses. So I'm very, very proud to have been involved in this. And as Bob said, this doesn't just benefit military spouses. Licensure, in my point of view, harms so many people. It harms women. It harms minorities by creating barriers to entry. In the 1950s, fewer than 5% of occupations required licensing. Now it's between 25 and 30%. In what universe does it make sense for an EMT to require 150 hours of training, whereas a hairdresser or a barber requires 1,500 hours? What universe? The state of Connecticut. So I hope as we go forward, not only have we provided fabulous opportunities for our military spouses, but we will continue to work with the Department of Consumer Protection, with the Department of Public Health, who've been so responsive during this, and with this governor and the legislature. Nothing is more important than creating opportunities for people in Connecticut and moving into Connecticut to have trades, to have careers, to provide for their families and have the great quality of life that we know we have in this region. So I'm delighted to have been part of this process. I'm so proud to be here today and thank everyone who was involved. And it's my great pleasure to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Susan Beisowitz. Thank you so much, uh, Holly, and I'm so proud to be here on this beautiful day uh, at this great base with our governor, our military leaders, and our military families as the governor signs this bill into law. I'm especially pleased 
because this bill comes as the result of a great idea. Uh, at one of the first meetings of the Council on Women and Girls, um, Robert Ross brought this idea to us. And for uh, the past two legislative sessions, our council worked alongside our legislators to get this passed. But he raised the issue of military spouses having difficulty working within their chosen occupation because they had to move so frequently and licensure was different in every state. And here's some stunning statistics. Approximately 90% of our military spouses are women. So this was definitely within the purview of our Council on Women and Girls. And 35% of military spouses in the labor force work in licensed professions. And so they are 10 times more likely to have moved across state lines last year than their civilian counterparts. So this was a huge problem for mainly female military spouses who, while they were waiting for months, even years, to get their certification, to get their licensure uh, in this state, they were much more likely to be unemployed or employed in lower paying jobs. That's why it's such a win for our military families to finally make this happen. So the licensure red tape is just creating a national security issue, really, by creating an unnecessary hardship for military families, thousands of them uh, in our state. And so we are so pleased to support them by allowing them finally to pursue their professions and to give those great families our support. So um, we are delighted to be removing this barrier. And again, just want to thank uh, Robert Ross and all of our partners on our Veterans Committee for helping to make this happen. Thank you so much. And I'm not sure, but I do believe it is my great honor to introduce my awesome partner in state government, our wonderful governor, Ned Lamont. Keep me on track. Hey, thanks, Susan. Um, good morning, everybody. I I love being here in front of the Nautilus. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, with all due deference to Virginia, this is the submarine capital of America. And um, we made the first. We make the best. Um, this is our response to Sputnik uh, and set an example around the world and kept the peace. That's what Captain Moore was explaining to me. And I loved hearing his, his comments that um, what we're doing here today is um, about keeping this the best in the world the best sub base in the world. And part of that is how we uh, treat military spouses, and part of that is about family friendly, and part of that is about making Connecticut a great place to work. And I'll um, pick up a little bit where, you know, Holly left off. Um, we work every day to make sure it's easier for people to work here in this state. I know there's um, still a hesitancy here. Our um, infection rate, um, Deirdre Gifford, our amazing commissioner of uh, social services, um, you know, we're up at a little over 3%, still the best in the country, but uh, we're watching this carefully. I got to do everything I can to give people confidence. You can go back to work safely. Uh, we've tried our best to make it easier for people to get back to work. Um, keeping our schools open is really important. What that means to spouses, what that means to parents, what that means to single parents. And our schools are going to open safely this fall, uh, just like they did last fall. And when it comes to family friendly, um, we had the biggest expansion of daycare and child care in the history of the state, making that easier for families, making that easier for spouses uh, to be able to take care of their kids in the best way possible and still get on with what they got to do. Um, we're paying a little more uh, across the board, working families, middle class families saw a wage boost. Um, 
Uh, most of that related to the market, a little bit related to uh, the minimum wage, uh, which went up uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, some of it related to um, a big tax cut for working middle class families, thanks to our, our friends in the legislature here, the earned income tax credit. Uh, which is all the lead up to uh, how do we make this an easier place to work? How do we make this an easier place for um, folks who are moving to the state to be able to work or continue working? And that's what this licensure bill is all about. It is cumbersome as heck. You know, you got 50 different states, 50 different licensing uh, mechanisms. It can be long. Um, we know that from uh, tens of thousands of people moving in the state saying, what do I have to do to get recertified? Bob Ross is telling me back um, when he moved to the state and his uh, wife was an excellent trained nurse. He had done it for well over a decade and came to the state and had to start all over again commuting to Hartford to get that. Um, no more. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, and that's so important to our, our families. And it's particularly important to our military families. Um, I want you to stay here forever. I hope you love Connecticut and don't get sent somewhere else. But um, most folks stay here, what, two, three, five, six years. And that's um, thousands every year coming. And I just want to make sure that when you come, you know you're welcome. You know that we're so proud that uh, Connecticut's your home and uh, what it means to be able to have a job, keep a job, whatever you are doing, maybe from some other state, make it easier to transfer that licensing right here. Um, I think that's um, great for families, it's great for the base, and it's really great for the state of Connecticut, and that's why this bill was so important, and without further ado, let's sign it. What do you say? Big Ben. Oh, 